empirical formula of a compound. John Dalton stated that atoms combine with one another in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. So, let's look at the example. H2O shows that one molecule of water contains two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. Okay. So, we look at any type of compound, right? CO2, one carbon atom, two oxygen atoms. Okay, notice how they're always, the subscript is always a whole number. Okay. The empirical formula of a compound shows the lowest whole number ratio of the element in the compound. So here are two terms, empirical and molecular formula. Okay. H2O can be considered an empirical and a molecular formula because H2O is the lowest that we can, all, that we can actually simplify the, uh, the compound. Um, so if we look at something like, uh, like glucose, C6, H12, O6, what we can do, this is considered a molecular formula. But if we divide, okay, and re we reduce these numbers, 6, 12, and 6, to its lowest term, okay, so if we, we, we reduce it to its lowest term, what do we get? What can we divide all three of those subscribe? Six, right, to simplify. So if we divided all these by six, we get C H2O. That's obviously not going to be glucose. But that is considered the empirical formula of glucose. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys in a, a set of examples. And I think you guys have, should have them in your notes. So the molecular formula describes the number of atoms of each element that make up the molecule or formula unit. Remember what we said about formula units? What are formula units? We're referring to ionic compounds. Okay, compounds. Let's look at the following. So here we have, uh, so we're going to compare molecular and empirical formula. So we have the molecular formula, okay? The empirical formula, what can we divide each one of the subscripts by, right? We can divide them all by two, right? So we get HO, okay? So the ratio is one to one. Now, H2O, can we divide the subscripts by, by anything? To simplify them any further? No. So the molecular formula is also going to be equal to the empirical formula. So what is the ratio between hydrogens and oxygens? Two to one. Two to one. Okay. Acetylene, C2H2, can it be simplified? Yes. yes. So the molecular formula is going to be different from the empirical formula and it will re re simplify to CH. Right? So what is the ratio? One to one. Benzene, C6H6, simplifies to CH, right? So the ratio is also one to one, notice. But they're completely different. Okay. But in terms of molecular and, and empirical, and you're, you'll see what, what, I, what I mean when we're actually doing the, uh, the calculations. Uh, aniline here, C6H7N, can it be simplified? No. So the molecular formula is the same as the empirical formula. So the ratio here of carbons to hydrogens to nitrogens would be 6 to 7 to 1. And the last one here, which we just did, okay, for glucose, C6H12O6 can be simplified to CH2O. And the ratio is to 2 to 1. Okay, so pretty simple. But what we're going to be doing now is using what we've calculated in the past to figure out what the empirical, using the empirical formulas. And then once we've got, we figure out what the ratios are and figure out what is actually that compound. So compounds may have the same empirical formula, but with their molecular formula may exhibit completely different properties. So here, there were two of them that we saw in the, um, in the chart. So we had benzene and acetylene. Both of them have different um, 
molar masses, obviously, right? Because in the end, their molecular formulas are completely different. Okay, so one highly flammable, uh, and it's a gas used in welder's torch. Okay, so that's you know something when we're, we're looking at well, they both exhibit the same empirical formulas, okay? but when you try to figure out what the actual formula is, you'll actually notice that their molecular formula is completely different. So. Calculating empirical formula can be made using the percentage composition of a compound. So, convert the percentage into a mass number. So if we have X percent of the compound, treat it as if it's that many grams. So, example, 85.6% carbon, just write it down as 85.6 grams. So we're gonna take the full total percentage of 100 and treat it as if it's a 100 gram sample. Okay, so we're going to use 100 percent as 100 grams for the total compound because that's all we need in order to find the uh, the actual formula. So we're going to assume 100 percent total composition is for a sample that is 100 grams. It might not be the amount that we have, but that will be the basis that we're going to start from. Calculate the empirical formula of a compound that is 85.6% carbon and 14.4% hydrogen. So carbon, 85.6% is now 85.6 grams. Okay. Hydrogen, 14.4% is going to become 14.4 grams. So take a moment and find the molar mass of each one. What is the molar mass? Okay, so what we've got, we've got the assumed mass that we have for a 100 gram sample. Okay, so we, we're assuming we have 85.6% of that 100 grams is made up of carbon. The other 14.4% is that of hydrogen. So with the molar mass, if we divide by the molar mass, right, what is the molar mass of carbon? 12.01 grams per mole. Okay. Hydrogen, what is the, uh, the molar mass? 1.01 grams per mole. So notice we'll cancel out grams and grams. So we're going to get the number of moles. So when we divide 85.6 grams by 12.01 grams per mole, what do we get? 7.1? Okay, mole. When we divide for hydrogen, what do we get? 14.3. Moles. So now, here is where the, where the step, where the step lies. Right now, we are trying to figure out what the um, the actual formula is. So it's something. So the formula in the end is going to be something. C. We don't know what it is. H something. So what we do is we write this formula as follows. So we know we have carbon. Seven point one mole of it. And we know we have hydrogen at 14.3 mole. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to divide each one of these okay. by the lowest mole ratio. Okay. Or sorry, by the, the lowest mole of the two. So the lowest one is 7.1. So we're going to divide both of them oops, by 7.1. Seven point one. So, what are we going to get? Obviously, when we divide these two, one. So, which means we know that our formula will have one carbon. How about the hydrogen? Fourteen point three mole divided by seven point one. Two point zero one. So it's close enough to two. So that means. The formula is 
CH2. Hmm? Most of the ones that we're going to do, they're going to round off evenly. Right? So don't just round off whatever number you see. Okay? Here's the following table okay, that you can use um, to kind of give you an idea of what to multiply. So we ended right with those examples that we did. We ended with 2.01. Right? So 2.01 is very close to 1. Okay? So if, you, if you, you're dividing, okay, and the decimal part ends in 0 .0, 0 0.95 to about 0.99, just round it off to the nearest whole. Okay? If you have 0 0.01, like we did with the, the last one, to about 0 0.05, round it down to whatever that was. Okay? Just remove those, those decimals. But now, what happens if it ends in... 0 0.80. Oftentimes we're just going to say, okay, let's just round it, you know, to the nearest next whole number. Right? So the whole 0.5 we round off to the next one does not work with these. Okay? So what you want to do is you always want to multiply this point by something that will give you an actual whole number. So if you multiply 0.8, right, times 5 you're going to actually get an actual whole number. All right? 0.75 if it ends, right? Again, commonly we're going to say, okay, we're going to round it up to the next whole. But if you take 0.75 and you multiply it by 4, you're going to get the nearest whole. Okay? 0.67, okay? Multiply it by 3 to get it to the closest nearest whole. Okay? So, we're going to use this kind of table, okay? Cuz look at it. 0.17 here at the bottom easily to say, okay, just drop the 0.7, right? So you get an answer like C and the answer happened to be 2.17. And we'll say, well, no, we've got two carbons. We round it down, right? No, what you're going to do is you're going to take that number and you're going to multiply it by 6 to actually find out what the closest whole number it will actually be. So this whole rule only applies when you're dividing the two you're rounding off only if it's in these two ranges. Anything beyond that, then, you know, you'll be given, you'll be given a table like that. But even that, even if you're not given, right? Just take take a number like um, 0.67, multiply it by two, multiply it by three, multiply it by four until you figure out when do I get a whole number. Right? So really, the highest number that we're multiplying by is 6. Right? So you won't go beyond 6. So if you'll be testing it out, right, take just the decimal part and multiply it by 1. Oh, sorry, multiply it by 2. Multiply it by 3. Multiply it by 4. Multiply it by 5 until you get the closest whole number. Okay. But remember, whatever you're doing there, right? so when you're doing to that, you're doing to the others. And you'll see that with uh, the next example. Okay, so the percentage composition of fuel is 81.7% carbon and 18.3% hydrogen. Find the empirical formula of the fuel. So, take a moment. Okay, use the, the, the steps that we've calculated already to solve for this answer. We've got carbon, okay, and we have, so we have 81.7%, but we change the percent to grams. What is the uh, molar mass? 12.01 grams per mole. So, we've got that. Then over here we've got hydrogen, okay, and hydrogen is 18.3%. We translate it to 18.3 grams. We're going to divide it by the molar mass, which is 0 0.1 grams per mole. So when we divide these two to get the number of moles of carbon, how many moles of carbon do we have? 6.80 moles. Uh, and then for hydrogen, what do we get? 18.12 moles. So, right now, 
as it lies, the formula will be C 6.80 H 18.12. So the next step is, well, we know we can't keep this formula as is. Right? So we're going to divide by the lowest mole between the two, okay, which is 6.80. So, when we divide these two, we get C, just 1, and H, 2.66, right? So we get 2.66. We cannot just do this. C1, H3. Remember what we said? Only if it was 0.95 to 0.99. Right? We can just round it off. So that's wrong. So what we do is, what was, when, we, when we ended in 0.66, according to the table that I gave you, what are we going to multiply this by? <coughs> by? Three. By 3. So if we multiply that by 3, we need to multiply the carbon also by 3. So the formula for carbon is C3. And now, what is the H? So 3 times 2.66 is 7.98, right? So now, is that 0.98 in the range that we're allowed to round it? Yes, we, yes it is. So the, for, the empirical formula is C3H8. Because if we don't, if we just round off, technically... Whatever the lowest one is going to be, what is it always going to be? One. Because if we're dividing it by the lowest mole number, right, to find the ratio of the empirical formula, then we're always going to have one, but it's not the case. Look at all the different types of formulas that are out there, that we've seen in that table. They're not always going to have a one. Right? So here's the formula. So the empirical formula for this for the composition of fuel is C3H8.